Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're going to talk about SAS globbing and how you can extend your SAS to use some excellent tools. So this is going to be the first extension to SAS uh, plugin that we're going to be using, and we're going to show you how easy it is to use, and it's a great one to start with because it doesn't require a ton of configuration or anything. So uh, you keep in mind that we are going to be using Compass for these videos, so I would recommend using Compass as well. Uh, if you don't know how to use Compass or anything, check out our Compass series. You don't actually have to know about any of the mix-ins, really, you just have to have Compass installed because we are going to be using Compass Watch to watch our files. Um, but that's no big deal. In fact, the first thing we need to do is actually install uh, another gem, and that gem is the SAS globbing gem. So I'm gonna come to my iTerm, and I'm gonna type in, uh, well, you might have to do sudo. I know I'm gonna have to do sudo uh, gem, install and then it's sas hyphen globbing and globbing is spelled g-l-o-b-b-i-n-g just like that so we're gonna it's gonna ask for your password and r and now this is going to install the gem on my system now and this is just like any other uh when we installed compass or anything like that it did it just the same as this so we now have version 1.10 of uh, SAS globbing. Now back to our project. In our config RB file that we created in the last video, we now have to re have a require, and then in quotes, we're going to say SAS globbing. So we're going to require this extension, SAS globbing is used. Alternatively, if we were to run the SAS watch uh, the SAS, you know, watch command or whatever, uh, we could actually pass it, this SAS globbing there, uh, but this is really just way more efficient. I would recommend doing it this way, unless you're really opposed to using Compass. Um, and if, you know, you need to use it with, uh, just when you click SAS watch, then you can always go to their GitHub for SAS globbing and, and read the command for that. So we now have SAS globbing. It's required. The next thing we need to do is actually restart our Compass Watch because uh, if you're requiring, if you're making modifications to the uh, config.rb, you need to uh, restart your SAS. So I'm going to do Compass Watch. And notice it's watching for changes. All right. The next thing we have to do is we can actually just start using globbing. So to explain globbing a little bit more, if we were to have uh, a file that we wanted to use as a partial, let's make a new file, and it was going to be, um, let's dot, say text, or let's say colors, colors.scss, and this is where we're going to define all of our colors, right, our, mic, or our, our variables for colors. At the top of our scss file, we would have to say import, and then um, actually, I'm going to make this CSS syntax. There we go. Um, we would have to say import and then the name of the partial, which was um, colors, right? So now uh, that's, that's cool, right? That's nice and easy. That's the way we've always done it. But what happens if we just keep creating more of these partials? We're going to have a ton of import statements. And that's what the problem that SAS globbing is trying to solve. So if we create a new folder, we can actually make a folder, and this is just going to be vars, right? So every single, let me delete this file, every single variable uh, SAS partial is going to be inside of this folder. And now I'm going to create a new file inside of here, and the file is just going to be, again, colors.scss, because this is going to be a variable file. And then I'm going to create another one and this is just going to be underscore type because all of our type related variables are going to go in here. So this is going to actually be a, uh, we're just going to put a type related mix in here. So we're going to say um, font size and it's going to be equal to, uh, we'll make this something odd, like 20 pixels. And then colors, we're going to have a color that is Rand, and I have no idea what this is. I'm going to type in a uh, totally random hex value here. There we go. We have a random color. Now, in my style.scss, I'm going to have the background be 
the rand color and the font size be the font hyphen size. Now we need to adjust this import colors because it's now looking in the vars folder. But we could, so we could say, look in the vars slash colors and do the same thing for type, so var slash type. But globbing actually makes it easy for us to say, look at everything in the vars folder. So this import statement now is going to use this asterisk as a wildcard and say everything that's in the vars folder compile into this. And we just need to finish this off with a semicolon. Now you'll notice if we save this, we'll come and our style.css has been overwritten. We come to our style.css. Our font size is 20 pixels and our background is the random color. So it clearly worked. It clearly imported everything within this vars. So what happens if we maybe want to go another folder deep? So we want to say, uh, let's think we have a vars folder, but now we want to have another folder and it's going to say grid. And so now these are going to be grid specific mixins or something that we're using and a new file in here, which we'll have as a partial again. So it starts with an underscore and this will just be width.scss. And uh, this might be a bad example for a file name with or something like that, but we can have another mix in here and it's just site width and it's going to be 100 pixels, which is not realistic. And now we're going to say the, uh, let's have a div inside of here. Let's just say dot main and the width is going to be equal to our, uh, I didn't mean to say side, site width right there. It's going to be equal to our site width. Now, if we check out our CSS file, you'll see we have an undefined variable. So what this does not do is this does not say any files, folders within vars. It's just within any files that are within this folder. So what we can actually do is have an asterisk two asterisks here, a forward slash, and then an asterisk. We can save it. Now let's check our CSS. It pulls in everything fine. So what this is doing is this is pulling everything within this vars tree, everything in the folders of it, everything in the partial files, and it's bringing them all here. Now we have these files here, colors, type, and width. They may not be the best examples, but what's great about globbing is, is it really allows you to separate your CSS, not only in, and organize your CSS, and not only you know with comments and things like that, but in actual partials and files, so you can group like components together in one partial file. Uh, all of your typography-based mix-ins or anything like that can go in one file. So you can really cut down on the length of your main style sheet and keep everything really extremely organized. And then it still compiles all down into one CSS file. So when you're all done with your SAS and you're ready to go live, you don't have all of these files. So this couldn't be any better. Uh, I love globbing. I pretty much use it on all my projects. I love having uh, several different folders. I have. Uh, I actually follow the folder system from the Omega sub-theme of Drupal, which includes uh, folders for abstractions, which are like your mix-ins. We have a base folder, which you put your base styles in for various things like colors, forms, lists, media tables, that sort of stuff. And then I have like a components folder, which actually has uh, site components, uh, small little bits here and there. So this is our first SAS extension. It's doing some really cool stuff. Well, the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Singularity, and it does some really cool stuff. It is a really great grid system that allows you to build really flexible grids to do whatever you need. And it, it personally, I find it uh, just great to use. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter, Level Up Tuts. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one. Bye.